Hi future engineers! We've already discussed and learned some important information about the building system design. So now let us study and discuss another topic and that is the building service system. Building service system. It is the systems installed in buildings to make them comfortable, functional, efficient, and safe. It is what makes a building comes to life. Building service systems may include lighting, chemical systems, plumbing systems, electrical communication and security, and fire protection. Lighting. Lighting or illumination describes the way an area is made known to the human eye through either natural or artificial light. Light can be defined as the electromagnetic radiation that exists within a certain portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. There are two types of lighting, natural lighting and artificial lighting. Natural lighting. Natural light is that part of solar radiation that is visible to the human eye. Natural light emanates either from the sun, stars, or fire. Buildings are often designed to optimize the capture of natural daylight. Natural light's common source is the sun. Other sources of natural light include fire and on nights, the moon. Typically, natural light is transmitted to the interior of a building through glazing such as windows or through other openings. Artificial lighting Artificial lighting is any form of lighting that is not natural. Artificial lights are available in a wide range of sizes, power, colors, and so on to suit a variety of application. It generally refers to lighting that emanates from electric lamps. Artificial light is the total opposite of natural light since it is human-made. Lamp Lamp refers specifically to a light source typically comprising a light-emitting element contained within an outer container, bulb or tube, which emits radiation within the visible spectrum. There are kinds of artificial light sources. Number 1. Incandescent the traditional bulb-type lamp with a glowing filament, once commonly used in residential applications, they are generally considered to be the least energy-efficient choice of electric lamp but are inexpensive. Turn on instantly and come in range of sizes and shapes. Number 2. Fluorescent Compact fluorescent lights are available in various sizes and fittings and can be used in place of incandescent lamps without changing light fixtures. Fluorescent is energy efficient than incandescent bulbs. Some are dimmable and are compatible with other lighting controls. Number 3. Light Emitting Diode or LED LEDs are a rapidly developing lighting technology and one of the most energy efficient lamps available. They are generally highly regarded for their comparable and better quality light output compared to other lighting types. Types of Artificial Lighting General Lighting General lighting is used to provide illumination over a whole floor area with a high degree of uniformity. This enables people, plants, furniture, and so on to be positioned anywhere in the space and easily moved without needing to change the lighting array. General lighting is typically provided by evenly distributed overhead lights. Ambient lighting, also known as background or mood lighting. Ambient lighting creates a soft glow that gently illuminates an area without causing glare. Light fixtures such as upward-facing wall lights can be effective at creating ambient lighting, accent lighting, or feature lighting. This type of lighting is used to provide texture and focus to general lighting and can draw attention to items on display such as artwork while shadowing other areas. Accent lighting might be provided by spotlights, table lamps, landscape lighting, and so on. Task lighting this allows the completion of tasks such as reading, 
studying, and wayfinding. It is used where ambient light levels are insufficient for the task in hand. Emergency lighting or safety lighting. Emergency lighting is installed to provide lighting in the event of mains power failure and provides sufficient illumination to allow occupants of a building to evacuate safely. Example are emergency exit signs, recessed fluorescent lights, powerful halogen emergency spotlights for larger spaces, emergency ceiling lights and down lights, and so on. Security lighting. Security lighting is generally used to illuminate an area where there is a concern for security. This may be turned on throughout the hours of darkness to give visibility of an insecure area or it may be turned on temporarily, for example when a person arrives at the property, sometimes activated by a link detector. Construction Site Lighting In order that construction work can continue effectively and safely in periods of insufficient natural light, it is important that a site is fitting with suitable artificial lighting. Lighting can be used internally for general movement and for working on the site itself. Externally for illuminating entry, storage, and circulation areas and can also be an effective form of deterrent for trespassers. Lighting for circadian rhythm. A combination of bright light during the day and darkness at night helps maintain the daily cycle of waking and sleep. Circadian lighting varies in color and intensity during the day. The aim is to improve alertness during working hours using bright light, but to switch to lower brightness, warmer colored light before it is time to relax. Mechanical system Mechanical system is any building service using machines. They include elevators, escalators, plumbing, ventilating and heating, and air conditioning systems. The production of mechanization in buildings in the early 20th century brought about major adjustments. The new equipment demanded floor, floor space, and the design team began to include electrical and HVAC or heating, ventilating, and air conditioning engineers. Heating and cooling changed dramatically. Modern buildings with their large heat gains turned central heating into a little more than supplement. Heat removal is a much more serious problem, especially in warm weather. The roofs of high rises are occupied by cooling towers and mechanical penthouses. Entire floors are often dedicated to the containment of blowers, compressors, water chillers, boilers, pumps, and generators. A mechanical system also manages power to accomplish a task that involves forces and movements. Elevators Elevators are also called lift. Car that moves in a vertical shaft carry passengers or freight between the levels of multi-story building. Most modern elevators are propelled by electric motors. With the aid of a counterweight through system of cables and shields or pulleys. By opening the way to a higher building, the elevator played a decisive role in creating the characteristics of urban geography of many modern cities, especially in the United States and promises to fill an indispensable role in the future city development. Today, the vis uh, elevators today have helped age disabled people they can freely travel in shopping malls, offices, and other buildings just like young, healthy individuals. With the increased use of residential elevators, their mobility within their homes has also become much easier. Escalator Escalator is a moving staircase used as tra transportation between floors or levels in subways, buildings, and other mass pedestrian areas. Modern escalators are usually inclined at 30 degrees, limited in rise to between 60 feet or 80 meters, with floor-to-floor -floor rise of about 12 feet or 3.5 meters. They are electrically powered, driven by chain and sprocket, and held in the proper plane by two tracks. As the treads approach the landing, they pass through home device. 
a deflection switch is actuated to cut off power if an object becomes jammed between the thread and the, and the comb. The benefits of escalators is they can move a large capacity of people at a time. They can place they can be placed in the same physical space as one might install a staircase. They can also be used to guide people towards main exit and special exhibits. Escalators have no waiting interval except during heavy traffic. Plumbing. Plumbing system a plumbing system of pipes and fixtures installed in the building for distribution and use of potable or drinkable water and the removal of water bone waste. It is usually distinguished from water and sewage systems that serve a group of buildings or a city. The term plumbing is fixtures embraces not only showers, bathtubs, lavatory, basins, and toilets, but also such devices as washing, washing machines, garbage disposal units, hot water heaters, dishwashers, and drinking fountains. One of the problems of every civilization in which the population has been centralized in the cities and towns has been the development of adequate plumbing systems. In a certain parts of Europe, the complex adequates built by the Romans to supply their cities with potable water can still be seen. However, the early system built for the disposal of human waste were less elaborate. Human waste were often transported from the cities in the carts or buckets, or else discharged into an open, water-filled system of ditches and led from a city from the city to a lake or stream. For continuation, we have here air conditioning. It is defined as the control of temperature, humidity, purity, and motion of air in an enclosed space, independent of outside conditions. In a simple air conditioner, the refrigerant in a volatile liquid form is passed through a set of evaporator coils across which air inside the room is passed. The refrigerant then evaporates as a processong yun, ya-absorb nito ang init na nag-accumulate sa hangin. At kapag naabot na ng cold air ang saturation point nito, the moisture content will condense on thin space over the coils. And after that, the water will run down the fins and drains. Ang cold at dehumidified air or malamig na hangin ay babalik sa room by means of a blower. In the meantime, yung vaporized refrigerant natin will pass into a compressor kung saan pinepressurize ito para pumasok sa condenser coils. These so-called coils are in contact with outside air or specifically yung surrounding air sa labas ng building. Under these conditions, the refrigerant condenses back into a liquid form and gives off the heat it absorbed inside. I-expel yung heated air palabas at yung liquid naman ay patuloy na mag-circulate sa evaporator coils para mabuo ang cool cooling process. In some units, the two sets of coils can reverse functions para tuwing winter, kabaligtara naman ang mangyayari. Yung process niya ay ganito. The, the inside coils condense the refrigerant and heat rather than cool the room. Such a unit is known as a heat pump. Para po sa konting historical fact, so pakinggan nyo na lang po. An early method of cooling air as practiced in India was to hang wet grass mats over windows where they cooled incoming air by evaporation. Modern air conditioning had its beginnings in the 90th century textile industry, in which atomized sprays of water were used for simultaneous humidification and cooling. Now, let's move on to heating. To define heating, it is the process and system of raising the temperature of an enclosed space for the primary purpose of ensuring the comfort of the occupants. By regulating the ambient temperature, heating also serves to maintain a building's structural, mechanical, and electrical systems. So, for some examples of heating process, we have here first central heating. Central heating appears to have been invented in ancient Greece, but it was the Romans who became the supreme heating engineers of the ancient world with their hypocaust system. Central heating systems generally use warm air or hot water for heat conveyance. 
The essential components of a central heating system are an appliance in which fuel may be burned to generate heat, a medium conveyed in pipes or ducts for transferring the heat to the spaces to be heated, and an emitting apparatus in those spaces for releasing the heat either by convection or radiation or both. Forced air distribution moves heated air into the space by a system of ducts and fans that produce pressure differentials. So, in central heating, tandaan lang po natin ang ginagamit dito ay mainit na hangin or mainit na tubig. Then, it will be conveyed through mediums. Usually, ginagamit po natin dito is pipe or duct. Then, pupunta na po yung init sa mga designated places po natin. Yun lang naman po. Next is radiant heating. So, by contrast to central heating, it involves the direct transmission of heat from an emitter to the walls, ceiling, or floor of an enclosed space independent of the air temperature between them. The emitted heat sets up a convection cycle throughout the space, producing a uniformly warm temperature within it. Yun lang naman po, sa radiant is direct transmission of heat ang gamit, tapos uniform po ang napoproduce niya na atmosphere within a certain area. Next is steam heating. So, the use of steam as a source of power offered a new way to heat factories and mills with the steam conveyed in pipes. Coal-fired boilers delivered hot steam to rooms by means of standing radiators. Steam heating long predominated in the North American continent because of its very cold winters. So, from the definition itself po, malalaman natin kung bakit steam heating ang tawag sa kanya kasi steam po ang ginagamit sa method na to. Medyo si similar po siya sa radiant heating. So, pinagkaiba lang po ay general method ang radiant heating samantala dito naman ay nakaspecify po na steam ang ginagamit na element for heating. So based dito, we can conclude that air temperature and the effects of solar radiation, relative humidity, and convection all influence the design of a heating system. Also, an equally important consideration is the amount of physical activity that is anticipated in a particular setting. Siyempre, dapat alam natin yung factor na yon. So halimbawa, in a work atmosphere in which strenuous activity is the norm, the human body gives off more heat. In compensation, the air temperature is kept lower in order to allow the extra body heat to dissipate. Dapat din natin isaalang-alang ganung type ng consideration in heating system. To explain further, an upper temperature limit of 24 degrees Celsius or 75 degrees Fahrenheit is appropriate for sedentary workers and domestic living rooms. While a lower temperature limit of 13 degrees Celsius or 55 degrees Fahrenheit is appropriate for persons doing heavy manual work. So that's how heating system works. Next is ventilating. It is the natural or mechanically induced movement of fresh air into or through an enclosed space. The supply of air to an enclosed space involves the removal of corresponding volume of expired air, which may be laden with odors, heat, noxious gases, or dust resulting from industrial processes. So Bago pa sumapit ang early 20th century, yung hazards of poor ventilation ay di pa gaano naiintindihan or di pa siya masyadong limit sa kaalaman ng tao. Yung carbon dioxide accumulation na kinikilala dati as major cause ng mga sakit resulting from poor ventilation. For additional information po, it has since been revealed to have a minimal effect under most circumstances. So, kung mini minimal effect lang yun, ano ba yung mas malalang problema in terms of ventilation? So, this is the answer. A more immediate problem is posed by the increased temperatures and humidity generated by the bodily warmth and exhalations of human occupants. So, para maiwasan po yun, we need to have proper ventilation within our buildings. From the definition itself, expired air needs to be removed from the building. That's how important ventilation is. So, another info, Natural ventilation results from thermal effects such as those from a flu or may be caused by wind or both. These forces are small and often variable. Their effectiveness is aided by opening or closing windows. So, medyo labas na po siya sa definition ng mechanical system, yung natural ventilation, which is any building service using machines. But meron naman pong mga machines na designated for ventilation like exhaust fans na ang purpose is to move indoor air out of the building structure while outdoor air is drawn in through leaks so that's all for mechanical system and thank you for watching hi my name is
Arizona and this is my report. Laming System Laming System is the art and science of installing in buildings, the pipes, fixtures, and other appurtenance for bringing in the water supply and removing the liquid and waterborne waste. It also includes the fixtures and fixture drops, the soil and waste pipes, vent pipes, the building drain and building sewer, and the storm drainage pipes, their devices, appurtenance, and connection to all within or adjacent to the building. Historical background Since the dawn of civilization, plumbing and sanitation has been part of human lives. All human beings, regardless of culture and race, had been practicing the act or disposing waste since time immemorial. Historians, in their attempt to trace the history of plumbing, events which had brought about changes that led towards the plumbing system that we know today, had painstakingly devised records of chronological events. The first artifact had been unearthed was a copper pipe used in a water system in the ancient palace ruins in the Indus Valley. It was estimated to be 5,500 years old. Such discovery established the earliest known knowledge of plant systems. Around 2,500 BC, the Egyptians used copper pipes in their irrigation and sewerage system. In the ancient Babylon, the science of hydraulics had been established as evidence by their skillful planning in their network of canals. The inhabitants agreed to collect water for drinking, washing, cutting, and cooking purposes constructed freshwater systems. During the Roman Empire in the year 500 BC, enormous concerns on the field of sanitation and plumbing had been observed those times. Aqueducts were built to convey water from sources to houses. Extensive underground sewer systems were constructed. Notable among this development is the construction or underground public water supply system made of gasoline suctions. Public baths had proliferated. One particular example is the bath of Diocletian, a bath that could accommodate 3,200 bathers at one time, and these baths were lined with ceramic tiles. In addition, Roman bath houses also include large public quadrants, sometimes with marble seats. The quality of Lamy declined after the fall of the Roman Empire in the year AD 476. During the Middle Ages, people disposed of waste materials by throwing them into the streets. In 1500s, a type of water closet was developed, settling down for introduced them in the 1800s, and a modern sewerage system began operating in London in the year 1860s. Water Supply System it is a system of plumbing which provides and distributes water to the different parts of the building or structure for purposes such as drinking, cleaning, washing, culinary use, and many more. It also includes the water distributing pipes, control devices, equipment, and other appurtenances. Water supply system is also a network of pipes that transport hot and cold potable water under pressure. Under this, we have the following. Fixture. It is a device that uses water, for example, sink, toilet, dishwasher, and others. Water heater. It is a large insulated dust that heat cold water to be distributed in the hot water supply lines. Drunk lines. It is a hot or cold water pipe that serve many fixtures. Branch lines. It is a hot or cold water pipe that serve only one or two fixtures. Water main. It is a supply pipe installed and maintained by a public entity and on a public property. Water service. It is a pipe from the water main to the building supply pipes. Meter. It measures the amount of water transported through water service. Valve. It is a fitting used to control a water flow located next to the meter. Drainage system. It is all the pipe Public or pipe premises which convey sewage, rainwater, or other liquid to a point of disposal. A drainage system does not include the means a public sewer system or a private or a public sewage treatment or disposal plant. Sanitary drainage and vent piping system. The 
The sanitary drainage and fan piping system are installed by the plumber to remove wastewater and waterborne waste from the plumbing fixtures and appliances and to provide circulation of air in the drainage piping. Sanitary drainage pipes are the pipes installed to remove the wastewater and waterborne waste from plumbing fixtures and convey this to the sanitary sewer and other point of disposal. Sanitary drainage system That part of the drainage system that extends from the end of the building drain and convey its discharge to the public sewer, private sewer, individual sewage disposal system, or other appropriate point of disposal. So let us now go to the parts of a sanitary drainage system. We have some special devices, interceptors, sumps and ejectors, backwater valves, and roof and floor drains. We also have some essential components, house sewer, house drain, house trap, fresh air inlet, soil and waste stacks, fixture branches, traps, and vents. So let us now go to the special devices, interceptors. A device designed and installed to separate and retain deleterious, hazardous, or undesirable matter from normal waste and permit normal sewage or liquid waste to discharge into the disposal terminal gravity. Sumps and ejectors. A sump is a tank or a pit which receives sewage or liquid waste located below the normal grade of the gravity system and must be emptied by a mechanical means. Sewage ejectors may be motor-driven, centrifugal pumps, or they may be operated by compressed air. So the third one is the backwater valve. A backwater valve closes to prevent reverse flow from a sewer to low facilities when there is a heavy drainage load for short periods that can cause building up and overflow of waste. The fourth one is roof and floor drain. Roof drain is a receptacle designed to collect surface or rainwater from an open area and discharge to catch basin. Floor drain is any pipe which carries water or waterborne waste in a building drainage system. Essential Components House Sewer It extends from the public sewer to the private sewage disposal tank to the wall of the building structure and is entirely outside the building. So the next one is the house drain. It is the horizontal main into which the vertical soil and waste stacks discharge. It connects directly to the house sewer. It is a sanitary and litter drain. It may be copper, plastic, and extra heavy cast iron. The slope is at 1 8 inch or 1 4th inch per foot. A clean out at a cellar or basement wall is recommended to clear obstructions. Clean out at the foot of each waste and soil stock should be installed. So the third one is the house trap. House traps are an outdated plumbing feature that were originally intended to keep sewer gases out of your living area. House trap collects water to block odors from escaping through the drains. The fourth one is the fresh air inlet. It is intended to admit fresh air to drainage system so that there will be a free circulation without compression throughout the house drain and stacks discharging above the roof. Necessary adjunct to the house trap. So the next is the soil and waste stacks. The soil and waste stacks collects the sewage from the fixtures through their branches. It should rest solidly at the bottom on masonry, piers, or heavy posts. The upper ends should extend through the roof for ventilation. It is commonly made of heavy cast iron, copper, and plastic. It is supported at intervals of 10 inch with stout wall hangers or brackets on or beams. It should be straight free bends and turns. So the next is the fixture branches. It connects the fixture with the stacks. Waste or soil branches are connected to the trap of each fixture. A horizontal branch should not be more than 5 inch from the vertical inlet of the trap to the vent opening. 
So the next component is the traps. Traps catches water after each discharge from a fixture to not to allow unpleasant and obnoxious gases in a sanitary drainage system to escape through the fixture. All fixtures are to be provided with its own trap except for the laundry and kitchen sinks connected to a single trap. Trap seal must have a minimum depth of 2 inches and a maximum of 4 inches depth. Place within 2 inches of fixture accessible for cleaning through its bottom with plug. Traps are made of steel, cast iron, copper, plastic, and brass except those in urinals and water closets which are made of vitreous china cast integrally with the fixtures. So the last components are the vents. So vents are the extension of soil and waste stuck through the roof and a system of pipes largely paralleling the drainage system for the admission of air and discharging of gases. So let us now go to the types of vents. The first one is the main soil and waste vents. It is the portion of the soil stock above the highest installed fixture branch extending through the roof. It serves as the terminal for the main vent and other vents of the system. The second type is the main vent, serving as a terminal for smaller forms of individual and group fixture trap ventilation. It is also known as collecting vent line. Main soil vent is the source through which air is admitted to the plumbing system serves as the means of eliminating objectionable odors. So the next type is the wet vent. Portion of the vent system where liquid waste regularly flows. Wet venting had been proven effective installation on building of moderate height, wherein the horizontal branch vent are connected to the vertical soil stack. Under this type of installation, the main vent is eliminated and naturally cost is also reduced. So the next is the loop vent. One type of ventilation used for fixtures in a room away from partition. It is commonly used to beauty parlor, barber shop, dental clinic, and operating room. The use of loop vent is not practical but sometimes tolerated, only when other methods of ventilation could not be possible. So the size of the loop vent is also determined in the same manner as that of the individual vent. So the next is the local vent. It is a vent without connection with the plumbing system. It terminates at the roof and connected to the fixture at point below the seat. Next is the utility vent, used for underground public restrooms. So let us now go to the ventilation system. It is a system of pipes, fittings, and other devices installed for the purpose of providing circulation of air and creating balanced atmospheric conditions within the system thereby preventing siphonage and back pressure. So let us now go to the difference between the soil pipe and the waste pipe. A soil pipe is a pipe that conveys the discharge of water closets or similar fixtures containing fecal matter with or without the discharge of other. It is also a fixture to the building drain or building sewer while the waste pipe is a pipe that conveys only liquid waste free of fecal mud. A waste pipe is generally smaller than a soil pipe because of the nature of the matter being discharged into the system. It may be connected directly or indirectly depending on the type of the fixture. So let us now go to the plumbing code. So a plumbing code is a code that provides regulations for the design, installation, and inspection of building plumbing and sanitary systems. So these codes are made for us to protect health and safety of community, to reduce potential for widespread disease, to provide rules and regulations for installing drinking water or sewer facilities, to identify required methods for installing plumbing system, and to provide permits and inspections. So the codes under the supply pipe size depending upon the amount of water, the water pressure, the pipe length, the number of stories, and the flow pressure necessary at farthest point in the system. While the drainage and vent pipe size depend upon the plumbing fixture units, so it's either the type of the fixture and the estimated amount of waste. 
So the codes for the non-residential facilities depends upon the minimum number of plumbing facilities, the water closets, the lavatories, the bathtubs or showers, drinking fountains, and other fixtures. And also it depends upon the location of the toilet facilities and the toilet room requirements. So let us now go to energy conservation. Energy conservation is the effort made to reduce the consumption of energy by using less of an energy service. So this can be achieved either by using energy more efficiently or using less energy for a constant service or by reducing the amount of service used. So when it comes to plumbing, we can conserve energy by locating hot water heater in some conditional space, insulating hot water heater, insulating exposed hot water pipes, insulating cold water pipes with freezing potential, by placing water pipes in interior walls if possible, by using low flow fixtures, and by sealing all wall fenestrations. Still under the building services system is the electrical, communication, and security system. First, we will talk about the electrical system. The electrical system is similar to the nervous system in the human body. It distributes power to the different parts of the building and contributes to controls and communications. Some of the primary assemblies include the transformer, power distribution panel, light fixtures, telecommunications, and security system. The electrical system has a close relationship with the mechanical system because of the power and control requirements of mechanical equipment, except for the light fixtures, power receptacles, and panel boards. Most elements of the electrical system are inaccessible. As a result, the expected useful service life of the Inaccessible elements like wiring is often intended to be for the life of the building or very long periods of time. Accessible components do require periodic inspection, maintenance, and renewals. Many of the assets are considered long-life assets or medium-life assets. The electrical system includes assets such as for the power supply, we have the transformers, generators for the distribution, the switch gear, panel boards, lighting protection for the lighting, the interior light fixtures, and the exterior light fixtures for the for the day-to-day -day and security, and telecommunications and security. For the power supply, first we have the transformer. Transformers are electrical devices consisting of two or more coils of wire used to transfer electrical energy by means of a changing magnetic field. Distribution transformer will supply power to the switchgear located in electrical room. Transformer to be installed shall comply with the specifications and relevant the Philippine Electrical Code standards or equivalent international standards. Another power supply are generators. Generator set is a device that converts mechanical energy into electricity. When selecting generators, the first question is what is the size of the load it is going to supply and what is the amount of running loads, the kilowatt R, and the starting loads, or KVAR. This is known as sizing of generators for site loads. The emergency generator will be supplying the loads during the power failure. Generator set shall comply to the international standards such as NEMA, IEC, ASTM, NFPA, and relevant standards. For the distribution, we have the switch gear. Switch gear is an electric power supply system which is composed of electrical disconnect switches, fuses or circuit breakers used to control, protect, and isolate electrical equipment. Switch gear is used both to de-energize equipment to allow work to be done and to clear faults downstream. 
switch gears shall be located in electrical room which will serve the power from the transformer secondary. Switch gears shall comply with the PEC standard or equivalent international standard. Another distribution asset are panel boards. A panel board is a component of an electrical distribution system which divides an electrical power feed into branch circuits while providing a protective circuit breaker or fuse for each circuit and a common enclosure. A panel board services to protect branch circuits from overloads and short circuits. Last for distribution assets is the lighting protection. Lighting protection systems are vital for commercial, government, and industrial facilities as lighting, which is carrying more than 30 million volts of electricity, is the leading cause of fire. A properly installed lighting protection system will provide an enhanced grounding network for lighting's destructive electricity as it is directed safely into the ground, leaving the building, occupants, and contents unharmed. Not all systems are the same. However, they all will utilize the same layered approach to protection and consist of four key components. The air terminals, conductors or bonding, grounding, and the transient or surge protection. For the lighting assets, we have two. First, the interior light fixtures. Lighting includes the use of both artificial light sources like lamps and light fixtures, as well as natural illumination by capturing daylight. And their lighting is usefully accomplished using light fixtures and is a key part of interior design. Lighting design plays a key role in creating the right mood and adjusting the ambience of interior spaces. The other lighting asset is the exterior light fixtures. The purpose of the outdoor lighting is to increase the efficiency of human activities during the time when it is dark and to make the outdoor areas efficient, safe, secure, and comfortable. Exterior lighting is important equally as the interior lighting. It should be properly and functional to provide relaxing atmosphere and at the same time, safety and fun. The lighting have big impact too to the whole look of your garden and patio. And that's why you need to pay attention where you will set the lights and what kind of lighting you will use to light up your yard. Nowadays, there are so many functional lighting ideas. You just need to find the right one that will be suitable for your exterior. Last asset is the data and security. We have the telecommunications. A telecommunication or telecom system is defined as any electrical system that transmits, emits, or receives signals, images, sound, or information of any nature by wire, radio, video, or some other form of energy within the electromagnetic spectrum. Thus, telephone, radio, microwave, radar, intercom, public address, CCTV, broadcasting TV, and SATV are all telecom systems. And security. Security is a method by which something is secured through a system of interworking components and devices. In this instance, we're talking about home security system, which are networks of integrated electronic devices working together with a central control panel to protect against burglars and other home intruders. Within the context of a building, is a network of conductors and equipment designed to carry, distribute, and convert electrical power safely from the point of delivery or generation to the various loads around the building that consume the electrical energy. First network of the electrical system that we have are the conductors. The conductors that form part of the electrical system 
are the means by which the electricity is transferred from one place to another. Conductors are typically made of copper, which offers a very good balance between electrical conductivity and cost, and aluminum. Conductors are also typically insulated with PVC or other synthetic insulating materials. Another part of electrical system is switchgear. As well as conductors, an electrical system will also compromise equipment that provides switching and protection capabilities, known as switchgear. Switchgear enables with manual or automated control of current flow. Manual relies on human intervention to work smoothly and is typically employed for isolation switching and functional switching. And last, main part of the electrical system are the load devices. The final components of an electrical system are referred to as the load devices. These convert electrical energy into an other forms of energy such as heat, light, or movement. Examples of these include common items such as light fittings or the luminaries, motors, electric heating units, as well as power conversion equipment which converts main electricity to lower voltages to run appliances and electronic equipment. Often such power conversion is done within the appliance or itself. Communications, life safety, and security systems are part of the numerous auxiliary electrical systems which use electrical power to generate, process, store, or transmit information. Thus, auxiliary electrical systems are also considered information systems. So now, let us jump in and discuss all about communication system. Communication system. Facility consisting physical plants and equipment for disseminating information, communication equipment, booster amplifier, booster station, relay link, relay station, and relay transmitter. Phone systems. Most commercial businesses require more than one phone line so that employees can receive phone calls while other employees are making phone calls. This is supported by a phone switch. Each telephone is connected to the phone switch using UTP or unshielded twisted pair copper cable. Telephone services are usually provided by public utilities which may be owned by private enterprise or the government. With the exponential development of new telephone technology, such as cellular telephone systems, private branch exchanges or PBX, wireless telephones, pagers, personal communication services or PCS, and facsimile or fax. The planning of telephone systems is a building has become more complex. The fundamental principle of a telephone system is a very simple. The system starts with individual telephone sets, a central switching or exchange facility, a DC power supply, and distribution wiring in between. The traditional telephone set consists of a transmitter, a receiver, a ringing circuit, and switching and coding devices. Small business phone systems. Small businesses with few employees typically use small phone switches called key service units or KSU. A KSU is designed to support a fixed number of phone lines and telephone extensions. 
A typical KSU supports up to 8 phone lines coming from the local exchange carrier or LEC, the phone company, and up to 32 phone extensions. Data System the term data system is typically used to describe a mainframe or mini computer system. It is not used to describe today's popular PC service or local area network systems. Mainframe computers a mainframe is a large, centralized computer that performs all computing activities. All applications were installed on the mainframe computer, and all data was stored on the mainframe computer test drives. Mini Computer a mini computer is a smaller version of the mainframe computer. All applications run on the centralized computer system and all data was stored on the mini computer's desk drives. Users interacted with the mini computer through terminals which were connected to a port on the mini computer with a copper cable. LAN or Local Area Network In 1980, IBM produced the first personal computer or PC and LAN or Local Area Network was designed to link PCs together and enable them to communicate. The term LAN is defined as a data communication system allowing a number of independent devices to communicate directly with each other and within a moderately sized geographic area. A LAN is composed of at least of the following components. First is computers. Network interface card or NIC. Communication cable and LAN hubs or switches. Wide area network. A wide area network is defined as a data communication network that uses common carriers lines to extend a land beyond building or campuses it serves. Wide area networks typically transmit over phone lines, microwave towers, and satellites without limitation. Virtual Private Network One increasingly common variation of a wide area network is known as a Virtual Private Network or VPN. In a VPN, by each mode of the wide area network has a connection to the internet. Then, by the secure protocols, a free connection is made between sites. Application running on the network operate as if a dedicated circuit connected the sites. Depending on the number of remote sites and connection speeds, savings of up to 75% can be released by utilizing VPN technology. Sound Systems Sound systems include overhead paging systems and audio systems. Sound systems are used buildings for many people, such as airports, department stores, and sports stadiums. Overhead paging system is used to broadcast messages in a building, such as airports and sports stadiums. Audio systems are used in department stores to distribute music and create a pleasant shopping environment. A typical sound system is composed of the following components. First is sound source, amplifier, communication cable, and speakers. A security system installed in a building safeguards 
people, and property. Security systems range from manned security guards at building entries or exits to sophisticated monitoring and alarm systems. But for today's video, we will only talk about the monitoring and alarm systems of a security system. Basically, a security system interfaces various access controls, annunciation alarms, communications, and information passing components. A security system may itself be interfaced with other building management systems, such as fire alarm, public address, and building automation systems. Modern security systems are invariably computer systems with logic chips, programmable controllers, and or central parsing units. The fundamental components of a security system are as follows. First, we have the intrusion controls. Security starts at the property line with fences or walls that may or may not incorporate electrical surveillance. Electrical surveillance usually operates on infrared, active and passive, acoustical, inaudible and ultrasonic, microwave, the beam pattern and field effect, or vibration detection principles. Next type that we have are the access controls. An access control system identifies the person seeking to enter or leave a building. The techniques include the following. First, ID cards, which may incorporate magnetic strips, proximity-tuned passive circuits, coded pattern capacitors, infrared opti optical mass, or mechanical coded holes arranged in a pattern. The biometric identifications, which makes use of several unique physiological characteristics of a person, such as fingerprints, a retinal scan, hand geometry, a signature, or a voice print. Of these characters, fingerprints and eye retina identification are most reliable and are thus desirable for high security applications. And the next technique, or another technique, is a TV camera in a CCTV system. With a camera, Visual recognition is relative sample and is economical for small or medium-sized facilities. However, it would not be practical to use only a camera in large where hundreds or thousands of people must be recognized by the security personnel. Nonetheless, a camera works very effectively in conjunction with other methods of identification. Another type or components is the detection within the building. Sensing devices are installed in corridors, stairs, elevators, and critical spaces. Among these devices are First, the motion detectors, which utilize infrared, microwave, or capacitance principles. Another device may be a photoelectronic electric detectors, which generate a light beam between the photocell and a receiver. If the beam is interrupted, a signal will be initiated. Another device may be electrical contacts, which may be either normally closed or normally open. When the contacts are distributed, the circuit will be activated. Typical applications of contact devices and doors are doors and windows. And last devices that may be used are TV cameras as part of the CCTV system. Another component is the annunciation. When the detection devices are activated, the security system should announce the event at strategic locations in the building. Commonly used devices include computer alarm monitoring station, alarms such as bells, horns, buzzers, etc. Annunciators examples are lights and lighted panels with locations identified. 
or TV monitors as part of the CCTV system, speakers which interface with the building's public address or intercom system, digitized voice messages, and wireless radio system which interfaces with the building's radio communication system. And last type of a security system is the recording information wherein all security-related activities should be recorded through a computer-based printer or file to register the sequence of events. The most common, most efficient thing used for a security system is the closed-circuit television or more known as CCTV. Closed-circuit television is a wired, self-contained television system Although it is widely used in security applications, it is also used in industrial process controls, business promotion, sports training, traffic controls, experimentation, data filing, etc. A basic CCTV system consists of an electronic camera that converts an optical image into analog signals, a transmission medium, usually coaxial cables or fiber optic, and a monitor to convert the signal back to an image. The signal is stored on tape or compact disc through a video recorder, multiplexer, or video printer. The system may be expanded into a multiple camera, monitor, and recorder system. A CCTV system may have one or more of the following features. 1. Mode Black and white or colored Continuous se Sequential Switch or Time Lapse Monitoring or mu Multiplex Recording which allows 4 to 32 cameras to be recorded on a single VCR Cameras Fixed Position or Pan, Tilt, Zoom or the PTZ Sensitivity to Normal or Infrared Spectrum Freeze Action remote controls, monitors, single or multiple units, full or split screen, various sizes of screen, various resolutions, 300 to 1200 lines per screen, and recorders, video camera recorders, time-lapse recorders, sequential switches, time date generators, or digital computer-based recording. Another main part of a security system is the building automation and control system. The term building automation and control system or box refers to the centralized system that monitor, control, and record the functions of building services systems, building facilities that are monitored and controlled by reliable box tend to maintain the building environment more efficiently and so reduce the building's environmental impact and energy cost. Building automation and control systems are build systems that regulate a building's environment or monitor it for safety or security purposes. Back systems use a centralized control unit and distributed sensors or devices. Each sensor is connected to a port on the centralized control unit with a cable. The cable may also provide power from the central unit to the sensor. The core functions of a box systems are as follows. First, maintain control of the building's environment. Operate systems according to occupancy and energy demand. And lastly, monitor and correct the performance of systems. Sound alert as required. The facilities that may be controlled by a back systems may include mechanical systems, plumbing, electrical systems, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning or HVAC, lighting control, security and surveillance, alarms, lifts. Most of these systems mentioned have been discussed in this topic, building services system. The prevention of fires in a building is an obsessive concern for humankind because the fire that hits is the fire that can destroy everything. 
Fire Protection System Fire Protection System is an important component of a building safety plan regardless of whether it's a commercial facility, hospital, or educational facility. One of the role of civil engineer is to protect people and their environment from destructive fires. It includes analysis of fire hazards, mitigation of fire damage by proper design, construction, arrangement, and use of buildings, materials, structures, industrial processes, and transportation systems. The design, installation, and maintenance of fire detection and suppression and communication system and post-fire investigation and analysis. The Benefits of Fire Protection Systems Number 1 One of the main benefits of fire protection system is that, in the long run, it saves money. Think of a business and what investments are made in manufacturing equipment, information technology, hardware and infrastructure. If a fire impacts operations for a significant period of time, it could cost a company billions of dollars. Number two, another benefit of some types of fire protection system is the automatic dispatching of emergency services. These systems will work to immediately suppress the fire while also notifying the authorities to send emergency professionals to your location. Number three, provide building and its occupants protection in the event of fire. There are two types of fire protection systems. Number one, passive fire protection and number two, active fire protection. Passive fire protection, it uses systems that do not require any motion or action in order to work. In a case of fire, it protects the building by confining the fire to prevent it to spread to unexposed rooms while allowing safe evacuation to be done. Passive fire protection is the integration of fire protection in the design and planning stage of a building, mainly meeting in the requirements of A. Compartmentation It is the confinement and separation of a big volume into smaller sealed compartments which can prevent the rapid horizontal or vertical spread of fire to minimize the harm. It includes Fire doors A door made of non-combustible material the purpose of which is to prevent a fire from spreading within the building. B. Means of escape. Provide the shortest way to direct the users to the closest safety assembly area within a short time frame. It includes number 1. Fire exit. A means of exiting in a building in the event of fire. Number 2. Fire exit signs are essential signs around the place due to the quick, automated response needed during fire emergencies. C. Dead End Limit is the distance to a story exit or to a point where alternative means of escape is available, provided that the total distance shall not exceed the limits. Letter D. Total Travel Distance the total distance inclusive of the dead end distance from the point to either the fire resisting door in the staircase enclosure or the first thread of the staircase. E. Smoke control. In most fire situations, smoke is one of the contributing factors that hinder evacuation as it decreases visibility and smothers respiration. It includes number one. Fire damper are designed to keep the fire from spreading through the ducting as well as other types of openings in the building. Number two, smoke damper are designed to slow the travel of smoke in a fire. F. Structural integrity. It refers to the performance of material to sustain its stability in a case of fire to prevent collapse or disintegration. It includes number 1 firewalls a fire resistant structure that restricts the spread of fire and allows the collapse of the building on either side of the wall without allowing the collapse of the wall in fire protection it uses systems that do require a certain amount of motion or action to work properly 
it alerts the occupants in the building for evacuation and attempt to extinguish the fire by using the manually and automatically operated fire mechanical system. It includes fire alarm and detection systems. It is usually detected through the heat and smoke which in return it will alarm and enable an emergency evacuation. It consists of fire sensors such as A. Smoke detector used to sense fires B. Heat detectors used to detect a sudden increase in heat C. Manual call point a small button placed near exits that can be pressed by anyone who realizes that there is a fire. D. Response indicator A small red light that is placed outside the door. These lights, if the smoke detector inside is has been activated in order to tell the firefighters the location of the fire. 2. Firefighting system A system of equipment used to prevent, extinguish, localize, or block fires in enclosed spaces. It includes letter A, sprinkler system. It is usually installed at the ceiling level of the building which is connected to the water supply. Sprinkler is a nozzle attached to a network of pipes and installed just below the ceiling of a room. Letter B, fire extinguisher. A portable or movable apparatus used to put out a small fire by directing onto it a substance that cools the burning material, deprives the flame of oxygen, and interferes with the chemical reactions occurring in the flame. Letter C, Fire Hydrant, is a vertical steel pipe with an outlet close to which two fire hoses are restored. It is also called a standpipe. Fire storage tank, the tank that stores and supplies water when the fire pumps are switched on. Fire pumps are usually housed in a pump room very close to the fire storage tank. Letter F, fire hose rocks and fire hose reels allow a building's occupants to engage in what's sometimes called the first aid firefighting. There are types of fire pump. Horizontal split case. It needs a water source that is not part of the system itself. Vertical split case are similar to their horizontal counterparts, but since they are vertical, they take up much less floor space. Vertical inline. It is smaller and are ideal for small businesses or buildings that don't have much room to go around. Vertical turbine can use water drawn from nearby wells or water tanks. The capacity of the pumps is decided by considering a number of factors which are the area covered by hydrants and sprinklers, the number of hydrants and sprinklers, the assumed area of operation of the sprinklers, and the type and layout of the building. Number 3. Fire Suppression Systems It is used in high fire this area which is sensitive area such as electric room or computer rooms with wiring. There are types of fire suppression systems. Number 1. Clean Agent Fire Suppression System uses environmentally friendly chemical reagents to extinguish fires in sensitive spaces like data centers. Carbon Dioxide Fire Suppression Systems use the colorless, odorless gas CO2 to extinguish fires. Restaurant fire suppression systems are specifically designed to extinguish fires fueled by grease and in a kitchen environment. Industrial fire suppression systems are high hazard environments and industrial fire suppression systems are designed to confidently extinguish fires fueled by chemicals. Nullifier 2014 stated that the overall aim of the active fire protection system is to Number 1. Detecting the fire early and evacuating the building Number 2. Alerting emergency services at an early stage of the fire and Number 3. Control the movement of smoke and fire Number 4. Suppress and or starve the fire of oxygen and fuel 
Considerations for choosing the right protection system Both passive and active fire protection systems are necessary to keep you and your property safe. However, choosing the right active fire protection system for your property can be very difficult. There are a variety of systems to choose from and the functionality of each depends on the type of property it is installed in. There are a few major aspects to consider when choosing an active fire protection system. Number 1. The size and type of building you are protecting. Number 2. The kinds of materials you are storing on your property. The operation and maintenance of the system. And number 4. The fire protection services and maintenance requirements. For the size and type of building you are protecting, Large open spaces like warehouses provide different challenges than insular rooms like those in an apartment building. Some questions to ask are, how large is the property? Are there multiple floors? What is the layout of the building? Number 2. What kinds of materials you are storing on your property? Storage of sensitive material like electronic equipment or expensive antiques requires clean agent fire protection and suppression systems. Other types of materials such as hazardous chemicals or flammable liquids require additional precautions as well. Number 3. Operation and maintenance of the system. You'll have to ask the questions. Will it work around the clock? Will it notify authorities? What are the inspection requirements? Number 4. What are the fire protection services and maintenance requirements? The fire protection services and maintenance required for a particular fire protection system relies on specific local laws and fire codes and or national fire protection agency regulations. In the Philippines, we have National Building Code of the Philippines and Fire Code of the Philippines in regulating buildings. The best way to protect businesses and buildings from fire, to reduce potential damage to the building and its contents, and keep occupants safe, is by investing in a fire protection system. That's all. Thank you. So that will be the end of our discussion. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment down below. Again, thank you and God bless.